everyone, Lady De Winter here, and today I was going to show you all how to make a dishcloth. Now, I need new dishcloths and, and uh, hot pads for my house, and I have all this lovely, lovely yarn. Let me put that up just a little bit. Hold on, let's adjust this camera a little bit. Sorry about that, folks. Um, sometimes my camera just doesn't want to adjust. So, there we go. Now, so I'm going to use all this lovely yarn here, which this is called uh, Jewel or something. I bought this over at um, Joann's. So, and I've got all these lovely pieces of yarn. And I thought, well, I've got more purple. I've got yellow. So I thought, I'm going to make some dishcloths because I am down to two dishcloths. Believe it or not, folks, they do eventually fall apart, all of them. So, now let's get this a little bit closer here. There we go. So, to start the dishcloth, I'm going to make my circle, of course, like so, okay? And all I did, I'll show you that again, I wrapped my finger, I put, pulled the loop off, and then I stuck a loop through, as you can see. So, there you go. Now, I'm going to pull that taunt, leaving a nice tail to be wove in later, okay? Now, we're going to start out with chain stitches. One, two, three four, five, and some people loop like this, and that's fine, six, seven, eight, nine, whoops, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, and 26. So now I have 26 stitches on my uh, pro on my work here. So we're going to throw this yarn in there so it rolls nicely. I'm going to now take and wrap my needle and go into the next stitch. I'm skipping one right there, skipping that one. I'm gonna go into the next stitch here. Now this is a half double crochet and I'm gonna make it with little ridges. So, 26 stitches this way. You should have at least 25 on your thing. It doesn't really matter. It, however long you need it to be for your uses, okay? I make mine small because I have small hands. Other people make them bigger, they make them longer, they make them all kinds of stuff. So let's go, whoop, we need to go through this piece of yarn. Where is my yarn? There it is, right there. We need to go through that, and I'm going through the top loop of my yarn, okay? I'm wrapping, I'm going through my top loop right here, and then I'm doing my half double crochet. Now, this is a stitch that I probably haven't taught you guys, so you wrap your yarn, you poke through your stitch, you wrap your yarn again, you can do it either way. I do it this way, lots of people do it that way. It does not matter. The stitch will come out exactly the same. Whatever is comfortable for your hands is the key. So now, okay, let's do that again. I'll wrap my needle, I'll poke it through this top stitch here, I wrap again, I pull it up, so I have one, two, three loops on my hook. I wrap again, and I pull through all my loops. I'm going to do that again, poke through, wrap three loops, wrap needle, come through all three. Pull some more yarn. I don't have one of those nice little balls, but I'm going to sit this down on the seat here so it pulls, oh, maybe not, there. So it pulls through just a little bit better. Okay, let's get this all sorted out now here. There we go. Okay, so wrap, poke through, three loops on the hook, one, two, three, wrap again, and pull through. Now, I go the opposite direction with my wrapping because I can. So I just go like that and pull through. Like I said, it does not matter. As you see, the stitch comes out the same every time. So wrap your needle, poke it through the stitch, pull it up, three loops on the hook, pull it through, and boom. Wrap your needle, poke it through, 
three loops on your hook, wrap again, pull it through all three. So we're going to do that to the very end of our yarn here. And then once I get you show you guys how I'm doing this, I'm going to finish the project and show you the finished uh, result because I cannot crochet that fast anymore to actually do this on camera. So I'm just going to show you how it's done and then the, la the next thing you see in the video will be the finished dishcloth. poke through, get your loops up, pull out some more yarn. I have to have my yarn very loose because I am a very tight crocheter and uh, so I like to pull it out so I have lots of looseness there and it's because I don't wrap my through my fingers like that. I can't uh, because my hands just don't work the way other people's do due to a long-term injury where I used to work. So last couple of stitches here, wrap your needle, poke it through this top loop here, that one right there. Now you got three, you pull, pull your yarn through, you got three loops, wrap it again either way and pull through. Wrap your needle, poke it through, and this first one is usually the hardest, the foundation row is usually the hardest. Poke it through the top, pull your yarn up through. And if, you're, if, you're, if your yarn jumps off the needle, it's not a problem. Just put it back through. It's not like it's a problem. So let me, three loops, pull it through, all three loops. Last stitch, poke through top, pull it through, three loops, pull it through again. Okay, so there you go. Now, you see the foundation row. Now, this is where we're going to do something just a little bit different. We're going to make a stitch, okay? We're going to make a stitch right there, a chain. We're going to turn our work. We're going to skip this chain right here. This one right, we're going to skip this stitch. Let me show you. This stitch right here. We're going to skip that one, okay? And we're going to go to the next stitch, which is this one right, right here. This one right here. Wrap my needle, and I'm going through the back loop not both like that, the back loop. And I'm going to do my double crochet again. Now you're probably wondering why I'm only using this back loop. Because it will make a lovely ridge to help you scrub. Now you could use that scrubby yarn. I have used it. I don't particularly care for it. I made face scrubbies out of it once and that was about all that it was worth using it for. It really does not scrub dishes well. So if you want to scrub, you need to get yourself like a, a scrubby or something. So. But we're going through all our stitches, the back loop only, back loop only, which again, I'll show you is that loop, this loop right there, that loop there, that's the back loop. So wrap your needle, pull through your back loop, just like we did before with the chain. And this is the product of what you're making. You will have a lovely little ridge, which, you know, it's not good for scrubbing pots and pans and skillets, but it will help you get a little bit of grime off your dishes. And if you're scrubbing your pots and pans with a dishcloth, you're doing it wrong anyway. You need a scrubby for the harder messes. So, now I prefer to use the sponge ones with the scrubby on the other side. That's just me. Everybody does their dishes differently, and that's perfectly fine. Whatever method works for you, I don't care what anybody says. They said you're not doing it right. They're wrong. You do it what way is comfortable for you. Just like in crocheting, you do what is comfortable for you. Now, this is the second row. We're going all the way down to the last stitch. And for me, this is where it gets a little troublesome to try to hold it all. My hands just don't work like they used to. Should I give up crocheting? Oh, hell no. Because if you give up something you love just because it becomes difficult, then that is sad. So, okay, now we're to the very last stitch here, as you see. Now we've got a little edge here, so what we're going to do, we're going to wrap our needle and we're going to go into this back stitch here the back stitch there, 
We're going to go through that one, pull up our yarn, come out, and boom. Now, there we go. Make a stitch, turn our work, skip this stitch here, go to the next stitch, and then start all over again using only your back loops. So, and there we go, guys. This is how I make my stitches. As you see, it's already starting to make a nice little ridge there. See how that kind of goes in and that comes out? Makes And these make a great gift if you put them like with a pot holder or a, a pot holder and some coasters. Makes great little anniversary gifts, Mother's Day gifts, um, you know. Unless, of course, you don't have a do domestic mother, friend, sister, whatever, then they might not like getting a dishcloth. I don't know. I like getting them. I like getting handmade things. So anyway, I hope you guys can see this. This is a little bit difficult for me. Okay, that stitch got screwed up. Just go back, pull it all out, frog it out, and go back and do it all over again. That's it. So... But this gets a little bit difficult for me because of the way I crochet, okay? That and the fact that it's already starting to happen. This hand is going to sleep. This hand is starting to go to sleep. Now, I don't know if that's arthritis, carpal tunnel, or what, but my hands are truly screwed up from years and years of working. Factory work, then typing 95 words a minute for several years. Uh, it does screw up your hands. So, there we go. Now, we're going to do this for, I forget, however many rows you want. You don't, you don't have to make this exactly the way I make it, okay? If you want it longer, that's fine. If you want it wider, that's fine. It does not matter. This is the ease of this particular way of doing it. You get this nice little ridge here to, to scrub with, and you can make it, you can make hundreds of these. I mean, different colors. Now, there's all different styles on YouTube, but this particular one is one that I just make myself. I don't know if anybody else on YouTube makes this, but I do. So, and this is just a half double crochet, little dishcloth that, you know, Scrap yarn, leftover yarn, doesn't matter. Okay, now, we've come to the end of our row. There is no other stitch there to catch on to. So that means we screwed up some. No, it's fine. It's fine. Okay, so there we go. I thought I screwed up, but I didn't. Okay, so here we go. We're going to go back across. We're going to do this for as many rows as I want to make my dishcloth a certain length. Sometimes I do it like 29 rows, sometimes 30 rows. It just depends on the size that you want your dishcloth to be. I tend to not make it any bigger than my hand because it, it doesn't need to be any bigger than my hand. So I kind of use my own hand to measure it like that, you know, and that's how big I make my dishcloth. You might want them bigger, you might want them smaller. It depends on you. So, I'm going to stop here. I'm going to finish this project now that you've got the stitch and the idea down, and I will come back when the project is finished and show you the finished product. Okay, folks, here we go. I gotta move the camera just a little bit. And this is our dishcloth. Now, you can edge them if you like, like I did on this one. Uh, this is a very old one, one that I've had for quite a while. And I used scrap yarn to make it. This is another example of a not, no edge on this one. There's no edge on this, or is there? Yeah, there's a little edge on it. I did it with that color of yarn. So this is a nice one. The only thing I don't like about this is too many holes in it, okay? Uh, that's what I don't like about that one. But this one, you can put an edge on it if you want. You don't have to. You can use it just like this. I think it's very nice just this way. But if you care to edge it, there's many, many videos on YouTube about edging your, your stuff. Um, you could just use a simple little whip stitch all the way around. You could do a skip one and stitch one type situation. But I like this just the way it is. So... 
there you go everybody thanks for watching until next time this is lady de winter reminding you that you're never too old to do anything that you put your mind to doing bye bye for now